Hello friends, in the continuation of the esophagus part 1, we today talk about the important clinical anatomy of the esophagus. In the part 1, I told you about the gross features of the esophagus, relations of the esophagus, course of the esophagus. Now in today's lecture, we will talk about the important applied aspect of the esophagus. So first is the esophageal varices. In the class of the part 1, we have seen the venous drainage of your esophagus, particularly the lower one third. Now when you will see the venous drainage of the lower one third, I already explained this in the earlier video that the lower one third part is actually having the venous drainage in two part. Now suppose this is the lower one third of the esophagus. Now it is having the two sets of the vein. The one sets of the vein are taking the venous blood to the azygous system of the vein and from the azygous system this blood is entering into the superior vena cava and then it will enter into the right atrium. Clear? The second set of the veins which are starting from the lower part are actually draining into the left gastric vein and left gastric vein is actually opening the uh, it, it drains into the portal vein. So the blood is entering into the portal vein. Now this portal vein is going to enter inside the liver and your blood will enter into the liver. Now from the liver you are having the hepatic veins and these hepatic veins then further take the blood into the inferior vena cava and then it will enter into the right atria. Clear? So what you will see here that ultimately the blood is entering into the right atria. Some of the blood is approaching the right atria through the superior vena cava and some blood is approaching the right atria through the inferior vena cava. So the important thing is that in this area, in this area you have the dilatation abnormally and that happens if this channel of the venous drainage is not working. And what is the most common cause? Suppose the liver is having any disease like the liver cirrhosis, like carcinomas. In that condition, this blood will now in search of alternative pathway. This blood wants to drain into the right atrium, but now this channel is closed. It is not able to approach the inferior vena cava because there is a portal vein obstruction. And what is the cause of portal vein obstruction? Suppose it may be the liver cirrhosis. Then this blood will take the same channel and it will approach to the right atria. In this condition, the veins which are present here is showing the abnormal dilatation and that is known as esophageal varices. And these veins are prone to rupture. And once they will rupture, there is a heavy bleeding will occur. Clear? So in this image also, you can appreciate the same thing that this is the site where you can see that these veins are draining into the portal system and these veins are draining into the azygous system to approach the superior vena cava. Clear? So what is esophageal varices? This condition is caused by the portal venous blood obstruction. So what is the site of obstruction? Portal vein obstruction. And what can be the cause? The liver diseases like cirrhosis. So the blood in the portal vein seeks the alternative route. Now which blood is seeking the alternative route? The blood which is going into the portal vein. So that blood, the portal vein blood is seeking the alternative route to approach your right atrium. So one of the route is the anastomosis at lower one third of your esophagus and these veins then become greatly enlarged which are known as varicose vein and these veins are subjected to the hemorrhage that means rupture clear so this is the first clinical anatomy the second is referred pain of the esophagus you know that you have very common term is heartburn heartburn now why it occurs in case of the esophageal pains the only reason is the common nerve supply. We have seen the nerve supply that it comes from the T4, T5 segments and these segments are also carrying the supply from the heart. So esophageal pain is carried by the sympathetic fibers of T4, T5 and when the person is having the 
heartburn in case of esophagitis that means the inflammation so when the esophagitis is there which is a common feature of the reflux of the acid in the esophagus patient is having the burning and that burning referred to the referred as a heartburn so that is actually not the pain of the heart it is actually the pain of the uh, esophagus or you can say the burning of the esophagus which is actually referred referred uh, uh, to the heart and that's why it is known as heartburn and it occurs because of the common segments and that is T45. So the pain of the esophagus is felt in the region of the chest wall supplied by the T45 spinal nose. It may be difficult to differentiate between the esophageal pain and angina. Clear? So this is the important thing to understand and there are some questions how to differentiate the hard one of esophageal uh, esophagitis and hard one due to the angina pectoris. Now there is a one more question about the dysphagia. Dysphagia means difficulty in the swallowing. So it may occur due to the esophageal compression. So when the esophagus will compress, patient will have the difficulty. The compression can be outside compression and outside compression is produced by mediastinal syndrome like the enlargement of the lymph nodes in the mediastinum that can compress or there may be a structure or narrowing or there may be a left atrial hypertrophy. Now my dear students, we have seen this in the part 1 lecture of the esophagus that the thoracic part, the thoracic part of the esophagus anteriorly related with the posterior wall of the heart and this chamber is your left atria. So this left atria is having a relation with the anterior side of the esophagus and if the left atria will enlarge what will happen that it will enlarge posteriorly because posteriorly you will have the oblique sinus anteriorly you have the sternum so this bone cannot be go anteriorly but you have the soft tube posteriorly so this left atria will compress your esophagus posteriorly clear so the patient is having the dysphagia but the pathology lies here in the heart that is left atrial hypertrophy which is seen into the mitral wall deformities and this is known as this is one of the part of Ortner's syndrome sometimes you have the Ortner syndrome which is having multiple uh, factors we and it have a multiple uh, involvement of the different parts of the body but one of the reason is in Ortner syndrome is the dysphagia because of the left atrial hypertrophy. Now you have one more important clinical anatomy is achalasia cardia. Now what is achalasia cardia? Now you for the achalasia cardia you have to understand that it is actually the failure of the relaxation of your esophagus. In the first part of esophagus I told you about the nerve supply that the parasympathetic nerve supply is actually responsible for the relaxation of the esophagus. The esophagus remain closed but when the swallowing will occur, the relaxation will occur so the food can go down. But the relaxation is fail if the parasympathetic stimulation will not occur. And the most common cause of this is the absence of ganglionic cells in the mantric plexus because these ganglionic cells are part of the parasympathetic system. They are postganglionic parasympathetic neurons. So because the parasympathetic system is not working, the relaxation is not there. So whatever the food is there, it will go and collect at one end. And when you will take the x-ray, when you will do the barium study, and the barium will also not go downward. So this is your lumen of the esophagus. And at one end, the esophagus is not dilating this esophagus is not dilating because the mantric plexus are absent in this segment of the esophagus. So what will happen that whatever the barium you are, the patient is will swallow, the whole barium will go and accumulate in this area. And this type of appearance is known as parrot beak appearance or bird beak appearance or the rat tail appearance. So the bird beak appearance or parrot beak appearance or rat tail appearance all are actually showing that the one end is pointed. The pointed one end is there and above part is dilated. And this pointed end or narrowing end is there 
because of the failure of the relaxation. This is known as achalasia cardia. Then you have one more important applied is Barrett's esophagus. The Barrett's esophagus is very important because if it is not diagnosed at the uh, uh, earlier, it will lead to the cancer. That's why it is known as precancerous condition. And what is Barrett's esophagus? Now you know that you have the two different epithelium in the esophagus and the stomach. Now in the esophagus, you are having the lining epithelium which is non-keratinized. It is non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and in the stomach you are having the lining epithelium which is simple columnar. So here the lining epithelium is simple columnar and here the lining epithelium is stratified squamous. So what will happen? The patients those are having the excessive reflex that means it is known as excessive gastroesophageal reflex. So in this gastroesophageal reflex disease, GERD, what will happen that the irritation of the mucosa here, the esophageal mucosa is repeatedly irritated by the contents of the stomach because of the reflex again and again. And this excessive regurgitation of the contents of stomach in the esophagus will lead to the change in this epithelium. So this epithelium which has to be the stratified squamous now become the simple columnar. So in this condition the lining epithelium of the esophagus change. So where is the change occurs? In lower end of esophagus. And what is the change? The lining epithelium which is actually normally stratified now become the columnar type or the a replacement of the epithelium with the uh, mucosa of the stomach. So that is actually a precancerous condition and it is known as Barrett's esophagus. Clear? Now there is a one more applied. This is a congenital anomaly of the esophagus. This is known as tracheoesophageal fistula. When you will see the embryology, you will realize that the trachea and the esophagus develops from a common tube and there is a septum occurs and that septum separates both the tube. So if the septum is not placed properly, there is a failure occurs in the separation of these two tubes. So one of the common esophageal anomaly is the fistula. And what is fistula? There is a connection between the two tubes, trachea and esophagus. So what is the most common type of presentation? That upper portion of the esophagus and as a closed blind pouch. That means you know that this is the esophagus, so it ends as a blind pouch and this is the trachea. The lower end of the esophagus continue with the trachea. So how the lower end will form? So this is the lower end which will continue here like this. So you know that trachea is anteriorly placed. So this is the trachea which is anteriorly placed to the esophagus. So these are the rings of the trachea and this is the esophagus. So the esophagus which has to be a single pipe is now having the two half. The upper part is having a blind pouch while the lower half is having a communication with the trachea. So what will happen? The problem is that there is a production of the mucus in the esophagus. You know the esophageal glands are there and these secretions will enter into the respiratory tract. So this type of the child will have the uh, hoarseness or strider in the voice and they are having very frequent repeated chest infection because the mucus is going into the trachea. And this is the most common variant. There are different variants of tracheosophageal fistula are also there but this is what is the most common variant and the infant develops the respiratory problem because of the aspiration of the mucus that means the mucus is going into the trachea and into the lungs. So this, these fistulas are caused by the incomplete separation of the two tubes. So if the septum will develop properly, then this problem will not create. Clear? So now, when you are having the esophagus, you have to write down these applied anatomy in your uh, question paper. But apart from that, you may have the separate short note. So in nutshell, you should know what is the cause of esophageal varices. That means the lower one third of esophagus is a site of portocaval anastomosis. Second thing is, what is achalasia cardia? What is Barrett's esophagus? And 
what is tracheoesophageal fistula so this is all for this class thank you